and I thank our speakers for being here. So here is the topic. Now that open source is mainstream, all sorts of companies, organizations, public administrations and uh, initiatives claim to have a stake in open source. It's becoming mainstream and we start now wondering whether we actually need these open source organizations. So I will ask our panelists to share with us today their views on the future of their organizations, whether we still need them, what's the role of these organizations, and I would like them to specifically dwell on what they think of the, what these open source organizations can do in a, a European context. So I have with uh, us this morning an impressive array of uh, open source organizations leaders. So in fact, with these people on stage, you really have the answer whether we need open source organizations or not, unless this is the final a final blow to this whole uh, organization. So we have um, uh, the first one over there is uh, Stefano Mafuli. Stefano is the community manager at OpenStack Foundation. He's always worked in open source, starting in Italy from product manager at Made in Linux and uh, a GNU Linux distribution in Italy to community manager at Funnable and then working with Twitter to uh, grow the Twitter uh, market in Italy. And um, he's a very busy man, but in his spare time he builds furniture and uh, he learns to sail in the San Francisco Bay, really. Uh, next to him, we have Philippe Robin. Philippe Robin is the GNV program manager. He's been working with GNV since 2010 and is fully engaged in the reshaping of the IVI in vehicle infotainment ecosystem. He has also been working with Autostar as work package manager in the 2008 2013 timeframe. He's been involved in many collaborative projects, including some EU FP project and systematic hosted project for years. To my left, Gaël, Gaël Blondel. Gael joined Eclipse Foundation to develop the Eclipse ecosystem in Europe and to act as Polarsys spokesperson. Polarsys is the Eclipse work group developing the open source tools for embedded systems. Gael spent the last three years setting up and running Polarsys. He puts open source in practice with non-IT companies like Airbus, Thales and Astrium. To my right, Simon Phipps who's the uh, managing director of Matched Insight, a, uh, an open source management consulting company, and is also cu the current president of the Open Source Initiative, the organization that stewards the definition of open source. He has worked for Unisys, IBM, and Sun Microsystems, and we've known so, um, Simon from before as the man who really helped open source uh, Java and the rest of Sun software. Next, Gary Rufati who is the architecture and consulting director at Engineering Group, which is headquartered in Italy. In 2004, Gabriele founded the Engineering Group's open source initiative in Sp called Spago World, that includes the uh, Spago BI uh, product. And he's been a member of the board of directors of OW2, and he serves currently as OW2's president. And last but not least, Bertrand de la Cretaz, who comes all the way from Switzerland because he lives near Lausanne and works as a senior R&D developer at Adobe in Basel. Uh, Bertrand is also an active member and the current director of the Apache Software Foundation. He's involved in a number of Apache projects as a committer, PMC, Project Management Committee member, and the incubator uh, mentor. So all these people are well uh, versed in um, open source and open source organizations. And we will start by setting the stage, asking them what the open source organizations actually do, why choose an open source organization, how, uh, how we can choose them, uh, what they can do to push the technology ahead. These are the questions we need to, to ask them. And I'll start with uh, Bertrand. So how do you define an open source organization? How do you recognize one? And I've wanted to have uh, one, uh, one mic for two. How many microphones do we have? Uh, it's not going to be good for uh, discussions and fights on stage. So to, um, to try and define Apache shortly, briefly, um, Apache Software Foundation is here to provide a space for, for its projects to exist. Uh, we don't have a strategy on what we do technically. We don't interfere with what the projects do in a, you know, from a technical point of view, but we're here to provide space for them to, to exist. Uh, we aim to be a very neutral space where um, 
I would say today companies collaborate, but we don't, you know, companies are not members of Apache, it's individuals who are members. So we take a lot of care to avoid any company influence in, uh, in our projects. And we are fairly, uh, you know, low key, low budget, uh, simple organization. So I would say it's, it's a space to, for projects that embrace the Apache way to, to exist and collaborate. Yeah, Apache is kind of a reference in open source organizations, but uh, we've had a new open source organization recently funded uh, called the OpenStack Foundation. And uh, your, your way of defining an open source foundation, Stefano. Um, so, Can we have another microphone on stage? Um, so the, for, for us, um, for the OpenStack Foundation, we, 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 we built on top of the existing history of the other, um, the other groups. Uh, the Linux Foundation, the Apache Foundation, they certainly led the way on how um, open source groups and uh, companies can cooperate into one space. And for us, the mission um, is not only to foster and to make sure that the project can uh, keep existing, um, become the ultimate goal, be all, be, become the, the, you know, the leader in the open uh, clouds. Um, the, the mission of the foundation is uh, to make sure that all the companies and all the groups that are involved into, into development of the project actually behave. And that's the, the, main, the main place, the, the, the main role of the foundation is to make sure that there is a level playing field where everybody feels uh, safe, that can uh, speak and they can be considered for what they're bringing to the OpenStack group and the OpenStack project instead of just uh, being uh, the big members that pay a lot of money to, to be part of it. Thank you. So Simon, you've been looking at this field for a long time. How do you define an open source organization? Um, so something that, that is both of these organizations and Eclipse have in common is they create a safe space for collaboration. Um, open source is what happens when many different people and uh, organizations come together to collaborate at their own expense to create a, a shared software asset. And for that to work, you have to create a space where um, the more powerful ones can't dominate the less powerful ones. You need to create a space where the people who uh, deserve to have a vote get a vote, where the people who've got the technical merit are able to make the contributions. And it turns out that making all of those things happen is actually quite difficult. That if you just get a group of developers together, once they go through one of the Dunbar limits and become a group of people who can no longer simply trust each other, you begin to need to have a structure of organization. Uh, and so that's what you're hearing from each of these. And you would hear the same, I think, if you asked Eclipse or OW2, that what their role is to create a neutral space where the collaboration in the self-interest of each of the participants can be carried out without uh, undue domination of any participant and without external interference. Hmm. So I think an open source community or an open source project is that safe space where it's possible for people to express their motivations equally and openly. But safe space is a little bit of an abstract concept at the moment. So what's, how do you tangibilize this? I mean, how, what services does uh, an open source organization offer? Let's ask Eclipse, a very well organized one. Yes, I think that Basically, we, we provide all the IT infrastructure to work, uh, to collaborate on pro or developing software. So it means Forge, uh, mailing list, forums, and so on. Uh, another very important service uh, for, for neutral and uh, safe, safe, spa safe uh, space is uh, legal service. I mean, uh, providing um, checking license compatibilities, checking uh, intellectual properties of all the source that comes in the, in the forge. And that's typically the two main services uh, that, that we provide. And the rest is um, developing a developer community and also establishing a, a business ecosystem. I think that's one of the difference we have with, with Apache because uh, we, we both have developer community, but uh, what we do at Eclipse is also to, to set up the, the condition for, for a business ecosystem around the Eclipse project. Yes, Bertrand, you said that uh, you prevented companies from inter interfering with the project, didn't you? 
Uh, yes, Apache aims very much to be about individuals, which is, uh, has changed over the years, because initially, you know, it was geeks uh, getting together to do very cool projects. Uh, today, it's more and more companies uh, who are behind the projects that we have. But we, for us, uh, at the extreme, I would say the company doesn't exist. You know, I'm, I'm involved in a number of projects. I'm not representing my employer in these projects, I'm myself. And we are very particular about that. It's subtle. But, but uh, I think it's a, it's a big difference. Mm -hmm. And I'm not yeah. saying the other models are wrong. It's a different model. Okay. Now let's get back to the services that an uh, open source organization uh, is off can offer. Gabriele, how do you see that? Oh, uh, I always love Simon's definition. A community is a ne neutral and safe space for collaboration. But what's collaboration? Collaboration is not collaboration per se, is uh, providing real value to people to companies, to citizens. So we, you need some support for collaboration. At OW2, we provide the three basic services, infrastructure services to host projects, to manage projects, to manage collaborative projects, because it's not just uh, projects working alone or working together. The uh, government governance services, governance about how to manage a, co a community, how to manage uh, uh, intellectual property and something else, and the communication services, because you, have to, you collaborate, but you have to communicate the result of your collaborate, collaborative efforts. I think these are the basic services that a community can uh, have to provide. Simon, did you want to add uh, something? So I, I, I was going to uh, actually comment on what uh, Bernard was saying, in, in that, um, uh, one of the difficulties, the reason there are so many organizations here, is there is no model that fits everybody. So the difficulty is that uh, Apache very much emphasizes the individual to the extent of hiding the corporate affiliations of its participants. You go look at an Apache project, you've no idea who all those people work for. And most of the people there do work for somebody and they're highly professional, often highly political. Uh, and that means that Apache's model doesn't work well for a, big or for a single large project like Eclipse, where the, the political intensity would just get so strong that people would be killing each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, uh, Apache is great for a certain class of project where typically a non-UI project, a server style project, that has very intense technical specialists on it. For a project which is more coherent and integral and typically has a user interface and is typically more directly used as part of a business, you need a project like Eclipse where Eclipse can additionally apply controls over the business behaviors of the participants by f completely recognizing there are businesses involved. And I think it's very important to realize that you know, Apache is great, but Apache is a disaster for Eclipse. And Eclipse is great, but Eclipse's model would be a disaster for OW2. <laughs> and OW2 is great, but OW2 would be a terrible place for OpenStack to exist. And all of these are needed because they all do slightly different things. Just. Just to complete my uh, my position, also uh, in in Eclipse, we have our members, our, our companies, but on the project, on project by project, we apply similar rules to what you you also apply. I think that uh, openness, transparency, and meritocracy are really the value we we all share in uh, in the different organizations. Yeah, I think basically we all share. And we, um, I don't think we should really try to strike a fight between organizations, Simon, I'm not sure. I thought that was your goal, but <laughs> all right. No. Oh, good fight is okay, but uh, <laughs> depends which one. I have to choose my fight. Um, now, that, that takes us to the next question. You've mentioned the, the project and the way that some projects are probably better off with an organization, this organization, that other organization. So, but that brings us to the question, so to why should a project choose an organization? And here I'd like to point to Geneva, which is a very interesting example of an organization. Uh, so what I understood is that Geneva was a collaborative uh, project, uh, started proprietary, and now moved open source and joined the Linux Foundation. So here, you're here probably representing the Linux Foundation, but more the GNV. And tell us about the, uh, the process, the, the, the thinking process that led you to join the Linux Foundation. No, I, I will clarify the, uh, the model. Uh, so GNV is a vertical organization, so in vehicle uh, entertainment uh, uh, ecosystem. And it's still a vertical organization. 
And currently, we do all the requirements, engineering, gathering, sharing, uh, seal in this, uh, oh, sorry, it's, uh, no, close, close. In, the, uh, in this uh, vertical community. Uh, but over the last uh, three years, we have been taking several steps to, uh, to move to the open, okay? And we decided to move all the code developed uh, by Genevi uh, into, uh, into the open space. Uh, Genevi is not developing a uh, lot of codes. Uh, the uh, Genevi is, uh, is rather adopting or adapting code, so which is in the open source. But the part of the code that was developed, I would say internally, we decided to put this into the open. And we decided not to use, to, to, to provide our own infrastructure to host this code. And this is why we decided to host the, uh, I would say, the, all the code development of uh, Genevi at the Linux Foundation. Okay, because it's a well-known, uh, I would say, uh, <coughs> foundation. It's proven. It's so there. what sort of services did you find at the Linux Foundation that uh, brought you there? Basically, we have, we have hosting services like uh, repos and, you know, uh, bug, bug trackers and <coughs> that's it. <coughs> we can benefit from well, their, their knowledge of uh, organizing events, okay? And that's, uh, that's also another part. So you're an example of a project that joins an existing foundation, and next to you we have an, ex an example of a project that decided to create its own foundation. Can you, how can you compare this, uh, Stefano? Yeah, Why well, did uh, the OpenStack uh, Foundation came to be? Um, so we, we went through that process of selecting and thinking and looking at Open, uh, the Apache Foundation, looking at the Eclipse, and looking at the Linux Foundation, and um, I think that what ultimately led to creating our own um, place was that we, we, we just needed something else that was not available on top of the other. Like Simon was saying, um, we loved the um, individual structure, the Apache way, in the Apache way, we loved the marketing efforts um, that are in the infrastructure provided by the Eclipse Foundation. But we also realized that um, the, the mission and the goal of the, uh, the OpenStack team and the OpenStack group was not, be, was not going to be fulfilled directly by one of the existing uh, teams. So, and we were big enough at the time that we decided to go uh, with creating our own. And uh, ultimately, I believe that size actually matters. So when we, when we had um, such a big, huge core of companies supporting OpenStack and willing to finance it, um, we went for creating a new one, mainly. What do you think, Simon? Should a project create its own foundation? And the what's of consensus should they join yeah. another foundation? Uh, I, I think that if there's anyone in the audience who thinks that they should start a foundation for their project, the answer is no. Whatever you do, don't do it. You'll, you will regret it for years. Uh, it will be like having a new baby that never grows up. Um, you will be paying the bills, you will have legal problems, you, life will be miserable. Um, then it may be that you're one of those rare projects that needs its own foundation. Uh, OpenStack definitely did. If you, I, I remember seeing the launch of OpenStack at, uh, at OSCON and there was a huge amount of interest that obviously could not be contained in an Apache project and that obviously didn't fit into another consortium. But there are, there are other projects. I, at the moment, I'm helping a, an open source community where my instinct is that probably they shouldn't be a foundation. Their founder wants them to be one. Um, so I, I would say that no, absolutely, you don't, do not need an independent organization. The first thing you should try should be to try and join Apache or to try and join in with Eclipse. Linux Foundation now has an incubator. Uh, there's Outer Curve Foundation, which is another home that was started by Microsoft for a different style of, of open source project. There are plenty of people who will do all of the stuff that isn't programming for you. And you should go to them first, and on no account start a foundation until it's the last alternative available to you. Can I add something? Sure. Yeah, I follow you on this. This was uh, the main motivation for course, uh, Genevi to, to, uh, to, to join this uh, Linux Foundation for hosting the open source code. The other motivation was because the Linux, uh, Linux Foundation was uh, pretty recognized for embedded software, and, uh, and Genevi is about embedded software. Okay? So there was no uh, reason to, 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 to join and to, to create another uh, entities uh, dedicated to embedded software. 
Mm. So there are very different profiles of these organizations. Bertrand, what's your, what's your take on joining a foundation or creating a foundation? I totally agree with what Simon says. Uh, we've seen lots of examples, way too many, where people said, uh, you know, I like Apache, but there's one thing I don't like, or I like Eclipse, but that one, one thing that's not ideal. So I'll do my own foundation. And pretty much they end up reinventing one of the models that, what, that we have here. It's, uh, I think, as, as you say, Simon, it's, there's a few exceptions, and, and OpenStack looks like it's one, uh, where it makes sense, but it's very rare. Mm. Gabriele, you are typically an example of uh, launching Spago World and the, on the platform and eventually joining AW2. <laughs> Uh, Spago World is not a foundation, it's an initiative of a, 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 a company. And we joined OW2 uh, to, to enter in a in big network of open source, to share knowledge, to share collaborative efforts, to scale the activity, to use a Spago BI not alone but with other projects. It's the motivation. I totally agree. Don't reinvent a new open source license. Use the main existing open source license. So uh, probably OpenStack is a, a big project and needs some uh, uh, real support and uh, size matters. But as you can see, uh, Simon, uh, the OW2 model can be disruptive for, OW, uh, for OpenStack. If you go to the uh, exhibition space, we can see that we are sharing a booth, OW2 and OpenStack. It means that a uh, uh, foundation can collaborate together. And, and indeed, quite a lot of the foundations are members of OSI. So one of the roles that we play is to try and bring together the different foundations so that they can communicate with each other and so that they can share efforts where that's appropriate. OSI, that's an organization. So what does OSI do actually, <laughs> really? So uh, OSI, it was formed in 1998 yeah. um, to solve a curiously English language problem that uh, uh, logicia libra is not the sort of phrase that is available in the English language. We only have the word free to describe software and most warm-blooded uh, English-speaking people think the word free means not paying. And they don't see the liberty dimension. They have to have it explained to them. And so OSI was formed to help people do logicia libra uh, in their business without falling over this word free the whole time. Uh, so we helped to define what an open source license would be and we've done that for the last 12 years and we're now just becoming a new organization to be the, the United Nations of open source foundations, uh, a place where individuals can, and uh, organizations can come together to collaborate and to um, uh, make statements on behalf of their organization, share experiences, share understanding. Okay so, oh, okay, so OSI is like the an reference organization, and whereas the other organizations here are here to produce code and drive technology and drive innovation. Yes. Gael, can actually um, an open source organization create technology, drive innovation? Can they do that? Or do they, are they just here to uh, serve as a home for product and technology that already exists somewhere? Well, typically I think that we and drive some, we can drive innovation in some domains. For example, uh, you, you will certainly elaborate on the position on OW2 about cloud, but at Eclipse we have a, a working group for M2M, and typically we, we push the, the, an M2M stack for uh, an open source M2M stack and uh, new technologies for the Internet of Things. So we can do that, and just to come back to, to the previous question. We, we can do that also because now the Eclipse Foundation has evolved to, uh, to provide the concept, to introduce the concept of working groups. And with the working groups, we, we, we provide all the services, all the well-known services of the Eclipse Foundation, but we also give the opportunity to vertical, uh, to vertical organization to, to adapt the governance and to, and and 
to develop in a new domain that is not natural for that is not uh, part of the initial domains addressed by the Eclipse Foundation. Yes. So we I have. I understand that yes. uh, in Polaris you had a group of companies that joined together to create these te technologies. JNB yes. is pr probably the same. The same where you had these technology companies driving innovation and working together to create new technology. So actually the. Technology is not created by the organization. The cre technology is created by the companies or by the members. Indeed. So, is th yes. is there a, a way that the the open source or foundation can have some initiative, or is it just there uh, watching what the members do? I think that there is a way. We 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 can uh, decide of strategic uh, directions and uh, try to work with members in this uh, strategic directions. I think that mainly the role of uh, groups that uh, foster innovation is to allow for conversations to happen safely among competitors. So when, when, you, think of, um, when you think of Microsoft and Oracle, um, they, they're, they're competing in different spaces and they do not really talk to each other. Um, but they, can, they do and they can talk to each other in a, in a safe space where, like in the Linux, Foundation, inside Linux Foundation, inside the OpenStack Foundation. Well, I mean, I mean, those names are wrong for the OpenStack Foundation, but I, you, you see where I'm going. The, the, re, the reason why these foundations have a, me, um, a reason to exist is because they allow for their governance model, um, their, their participation model allows for discussions that are, that are hard to have among competitors outside, but inside they're safe. One point I would like to add for Geneva, the, the incentive for people to participate at Geneva is uh, focusing on the non differentiated part of the IBI software stack. It means that uh, the, the customer in this domain uh, don't want to pay uh, multiple times something that everybody needs. Okay, So this was the reason to motivate people to deliver one and hopefully to get 20 or 100 from the community. Okay, It's a hard way to go. Okay. Now we see... Uh, Yes, go on. Gabriel no, and then no, Bertrand. It, it was a, 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 about innovation. Uh, it's not necessary that innovation is inside the community, but the community must act out of its own boundaries. Uh, for instance, in Europe, we have a, a lot of innovation funded by the uh, European Commission with some good results, some less good, but the role of uh, an organization, open source organization, could be to work with these uh, activities and give the, the sustainability to the results, to bring the results, uh, join research, academic research and development activities with uh, industry, and communicate and disseminate and give a long-term sustainability. So uh, innovation could be inside the organization, but could be uh, out of the organization. The role of the foundation is to give sustainability. And precisely you just mentioned Europe and that's uh, where we're trying to, to converge um, the, the role of these organizations in Europe. Uh, the European Commission is pouring uh, millions of uh, euros into innovation, uh, some of it open source, some of it not open source. We all here would be in favor of more money for open source innovation. So how do you see, how, what can we do? What's the role, what can be the role of these open source organizations with regard to the initiative taken by the European Commission? How can we talk to the European Commission? How can we interact with them? Can we do something? Is there, is there a way to do something? Because today, I, I think that they do this, we see some project happening, and then suddenly we say, oh, wow, we've missed this project, or we're not doing anything. So maybe we can, that could be the, some of the conclusion, the last question. Bertrand. I, I was involved myself in, a, in an EC research project called IKEAS, uh, together with Stéphane Fermigier, who was here. And we, we successfully convinced the, the project officers and everybody to give the code to Apache. It has become Apache Standball. And I think that was an interesting collaboration and the EC folks were happy, even though it felt a bit strange initially because the goal of the project was to foster European companies and we're giving the code to a, a US-based foundation. Uh, but I think it was, this was successful. And, and again, uh, these organiza organizations might not need to reinvent the wheel they should probably use, if possible, the foundations that are around. Mm, that's a good one. Philippe? Yeah, the question is really to make the model uh, of the European funding sustainable on the long term, 
okay? Uh, and this is where companies enter, and companies may understand that they need to spend part of the R&D money into the open source community, okay? Because we need, we need funding anyway behind those, those communities. And this is the, uh, what really the message as you should, <laughs> should be sent maybe to the European Union. I'm not that talking about... the European Union should fund sh the open source organizations? Should, no, no, should, should, should uh, no, not, 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 not do that. But this, this is what should be behind after the European funding. This should be organized. Or people should, should uh, if they participate to the, open, to, the, uh, to, the, to the European funding project, they should more or less engage in the follow-up. It's my personal, okay, my personal opinion. This is not Geneva opinion. For instance, at Geneva, uh, we are using results from a European, uh, some European uh, funding project. Uh, I would tell an example. There is a project called Webinus that has been working on the standardization of uh, web APIs, including the VI call. So we are recycling this work and other works into a, a joint work with W3C on the standardization uh, for uh, vehicle web APIs. So it's a good example, but we will make it sustainable with W3C and with JDB. Okay, thank you. Very briefly, I, please. Yes, two words. I two. just would like to say to uh, your pen project, uh, don't, uh, don't, dis don't try to disseminate your open source results yourself come and do it with a foundation, with an organization. So it's, for me, it's all about dissemination and technology transfer. Okay, thank you. I think that could be the, the last word for us. It almost. I think we should leave the floor because I see a light that's flashing here and I can hear a stomach gurgling. So uh, can we have uh, the microphone in the, in, in the room if we have questions? Um. Do we have questions? Oh, questions yes, we have one question. Uh, I, I'm very English. sorry, but um, we have a big short, so we will have one question, but you can go no, we, on, we'll on the... we'll take a couple of questions. Okay. Est-ce que nous avons un micro? Thank you. Um, I, I'm interesting to know if, if for example, the... European Union or some national uh, government wanted to give some money to foster open source, then would it be wise uh, to give it to some foundation with a mission for them to distribute it in a, in a uh, efficient uh, fashion on, on carefully selected projects? So I know this is not the way f your foundations are operating uh, to this date, but could it be a reasonable target for the future? if there was money to be given out. Given to foundation, who wants to take this one? I, I think that that would be exactly the wrong thing to do for open source. Uh, the last thing any open source foundation really needs is more money. Because open source, the, uh, uh, there's some very rich foundations here, but uh, look at Apache, look what Apache achieves with a budget that would be hard to run any business on. And the reason they do that is because the people spending the money are actually their members and their contributors. Now, I think the biggest thing the European Union could do to cultivate open innovation would be to require all recipients of framework funding to make their work product available under open source licenses. And uh, if, that is, if, if that's going to be a problem, people should not participate in framework programs. I think that that would do far more for open source and for open innovation in Europe than giving a pot of money that would disappear into the pockets of administrators. So set the code free, that's what needs to happen. Just a very brief compliment to that. Uh, we're hearing from, you know, creating the software and then distributing in open source. I think that's wrong. You should actually, those folks should create it in an open source uh, setting. That makes a big difference. You know, if you have four years funding, if you create it behind closed doors for four years and then give it away, it's, it will fail. You have to do it from the very start uh, as a community. What is actually, uh, uh, what uh, runs now is that uh, um, the European products uh, uh, found their own mechanism for uh, different initiatives. In, if you go to the future internet uh, activities or the European Institute of Technologies, they have their own mechanism for um, collecting results. 
what we can do is not to waste this money and a foundation can work with this mechanism to give uh, sustainability over time because a foundation is a, le a neutral legal entity that can, uh, uh, give, uh, uh, can host the results and bring to the market and add new value to these results, not wasting the money of the European Commission. Thank you. So that would be the last uh, word for us today until there is uh, an urgent is need there, for is another there any question. I don't one think question? So. No, I don't think okay, so. Okay, so thank you. But so please, a warm, uh, warm applause to thank our panelists. Thank you very much.